Hello and welcome back. Okay, so today I want to work on the transfer register. Now I've got here a test circuit I've built for helping out with that. It's got two 555 timer circuits that are designed to produce a control line. This allows us to simulate the load lines that we'd have on the register without needing to finish it completely and wire it into the main circuit. I've also got two sets of dip switches that I've wired up to produce more or less TTL compatible outputs. So these can be our bus data and these are our load lines. And I'd like to get as far as having a base 8-bit register that can load from one or other data location. Okay, so let's have a quick reminder of what we need. So the line drivers, not really necessary at this point. I'm predominantly interested in testing out the two bus loading circuitry. So we need two of these 157 chips for eight lines. We need an AND gate and we need a 574 latch. Let's get that wired in first. power lines, output enable, and there's a load line here. Okay, we should be able to test that that much works with the Japon cable. So the eight input lines here I've wired into one of these sets of switches. And it seems to have successfully worked without power. There you go. Set any old value on here. And that loads. That's good. Now we want the latch chip to load from either one of these control signals. So we need the AND gate. So this is the 74LS08. It's got four two input AND gates, so this one in the bottom left is going to be easiest to deal with. We want to take the latch load line from there. If we wire the two inputs to the AND gate up to the two control lines. Now, either one of these will trigger a load. Okay, so now our goal is to make it so this control line and this control line will load from this location or this location respectively. And that's where these 74157 chips come in. Now, I ordered 74LS157 chips on eBay, and the ones I've got are marked up as 74157, which I believe should be functionally equivalent, but there's some slight differences in their characteristics, but it should work. So firstly, what I'm going to do is wire the A and B select lines together. Let's not forget power and ground. Okay, I do know these versions of the chips can drain a little bit more power, so I think we'd be safer with some decoupling caps on here. Okay, so we've got to connect all of these Y outputs to the inputs of the latch over here. Obviously it doesn't matter which of the four two to one 
multiplexers on each of these chips we use for which line as long as we uh, match the output to the two inputs to the same section. I'm trying to go for wiring convenience here. That looks good. Now the inputs. So I'm using the blue wires to wire the right hand side to the A inputs, and then the orange wires to do the left hand side bus into the B inputs. What else have we got? What's that line? G. Okay, so G seems to be as a kind of output enable, it's not tri state. We need to bring that low. I've tied the two. A, B, select lines together, but we haven't done anything with them. So that I'm just going to wire into this right hand selector. OK, I think that's done. OK, I'm going to set everything on the left here to 1. That should be nice and obvious. Okay, that is what we expect. That's not what we expect. is in the wrong place. I think we had a loose wire there. Okay. So push the left hand button, we get this data in the register. Push the right hand button, we get this data. We probably need to uh, mess around with the data bit to be sure. So every other one there. Looks good. Yeah, it's working. That was pretty painless. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is start putting together the schematic for this circuit because we need two replications of this and all the outputs. So I'm still seriously considering building only part of the circuit on breadboard and then building the whole thing directly on a PCB. Because we need two of these, so that's going to be two breadboards. So for each of these latch chips, we will then need three separate line drivers to take the output to the main bus, the transfer bus and the address bus. And there's some additional circuitry I'd like to talk about adding to the transfer register as well. So we're looking at probably four breadboards and I I don't really have space on my desk for that alongside the rest of the CPU build so 
Let's look at the schematic. OK, I've got a clean new schematic for the transfer register. And what I'm going to do is load up the schematics for the bus control, the counter and the general purpose register, just because I want to copy some bits off them so from the general purpose register. I just want to grab the main bus from the counter. We want the address bus, the transfer bus, and I'm going to grab the power here as well. And from the bus control, I just want to use this header I defined at the bottom of it for the transfer register. Because obviously any circuit I build needs to match up with that. OK, so we've got load and assert lines for TL and TH, which are the 8-bit halves. We've got a load for TX, which will load from the transfer bus. And then we've got asserts for TX to address and X for and then this extra line at the bottom, I will explain in a future video. Okay, what does that mean? Right, so we don't need anything else from there. Actually, we can steal that so we don't have to wire up all of those bus lines. We need anything else from there. Actually, and we've grabbed that five seven four as well. Now, this does not load from the main bus. OK, so these were two 574 latch chips. These load lines are going to need to be different. I'm going to call those load low and load high. But between these two and the LEDs, we've got a good chunk of the core register. We just need the assert outputs. OK, so this is already the circuit we need to output the lower half to the main bus once we wire in the correct control line. So we've got our register storage and then we've got our asserts for the two halves of that back to the main bus. Now we need the asserts back to the transfer bus. And then it's exactly the same to assert to the address bus, with the exception of the control line it's keying off. Now hopefully you now see what I meant by there's lots of replication. OK, so that's all of our asserting back to bus is done. The only thing we need to do now is the circuit that we just built on the breadboard for loading, i.e. the interesting bit. OK, initially we're going to want two of these. OK, so the annotation on this isn't quite the same as what we had on the data sheet we were looking at, but you can see the patterning's the same. The group numbering 1, 2, 3, 4 is the same as before but they've numbered the input 0 and 1, and Y is still output. OK, 
which load line are we going to use for that control? I think we'll use the 8-bit side because that will just keep the buses on the breadboard the same way around as the registers in the register stack. Might be easier to think about and less likely to make a mistake. Right, so these Ys are the outputs. Now we don't actually have to match the same numbering as I did on the breadboard. We might end up coming back here and uh, renumbering them to uh, make it lay out nicely on the PCB. Let's just get them hooked up. What do we call the lines between the multiplexers and the latch load lines? Call it data. So I've set these nets as the input to the latch chip. So now we need to portion them out into the Y data lines. I haven't got a good reason not to do them in just numerical order. Let's say we may well reorder them at some point when we're doing the PCB. because they don't actually have to match any order specifically as long as they all line up with one another. Okay, so now inputs. So the zero ones here are main bus. And then the first, since we're dealing with the low half here, this is the first eight transfer bus lines. Now we've got these load high and load low lines. These are the outputs from over here that go into the latch chips. And they are the anding together of the request to load or the 8-bit halves. And the full 16-bit register. Okay, chip-wise, that is the entire circuit we've discussed so far. Going to need more decoupling capacitors than that. Okay, I haven't put in any indicator LEDs for these control lines yet, but there's a bunch of other work to do on this schematic before we finalise it anyway. But this is the, the core register functionality that we discussed in the design. Hopefully done. Excellent. Okay, well I know this is slightly different ordering to uh, doing the parts of a register than I've done before, but uh, maybe changing it up a bit isn't such a bad idea. So I hope you found this interesting. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.